Welcome to This Week in Security with our roundup of the most important stories of the week affecting the UK security for private and public sector organisations. Our editor's top stories this week. The most appalling fire disaster in decades and the questions surrounding whether safety warnings and fire regulations were ignored. Is a social media giant about to spy on you through your phone or laptop? What's being done to protect Britain's historical sites? Europol's sixth Global Airport Action Days detains suspects and uncovers a spider web of criminal connections. And binary apps, why Apple has banned them all. One of the worst fire disasters to hit residential housing in London for years has experts puzzled at how this fire could have engulfed the building in little more than 20 minutes. Onlookers reported flames shooting up ducts, spreading the fire like lightning rods. Though the 24-storey building dates back to 1974, Ryden, the company that refurbished the tower block, previously claimed that the building had met all fire regulations. They appear now to have issued a new statement, removing the previous mention of the building meeting fire regulation standards, instead saying the project met all required building regulations. Rescue services are still searching the building for victims and the death toll is now up to 30, with many more unaccounted for. Authorities say the cause of the blaze is not yet known and decline to speculate about how it started and why it spread so quickly. According to Grenfell Action Group, a community organisation, they repeatedly warned about the risk of the fire of the building since 2013. Key concerns were about testing and maintenance of firefighting equipment and about blocked emergency access to the site in recent years. There are also unconfirmed reports that the fire alarm did not ring or sound loud enough to alert residents, most of whom were asleep. Survivors also reported that the stairwells, which should have been isolated from smoke, were heavily smoke-filled, which prevented many people exiting. Theories are also being put forward based on observations by residents that the reason for the rapid ignition of the entire building was that the new external cladding, meant to be rainproof, was inflammable and allowed the fire to shoot up the outside of the structure. George Orwell's classic 1984 could be becoming more of a reality, with Mark Zuckerberg doing his best Big Brother impression. Facebook has successfully taken out a patent on a system that could spy on you to read your emotions and tailor its content accordingly. The social media giant says they want to identify which content is most engaging and respond to audiences' reactions. However, this could lead to various breaches in privacy. This has led to concerns that this system could be watching or listening to users at all times and could be used by outside sources, such as the state, to keep an eye on unsuspecting members of the public. This kind of development deserves higher levels of awareness and scrutiny to ensure that users' privacy is protected. Summer's finally here and one of the joys of living in Britain is spending time in the country's stately homes and castles. The problem is, is that these are also attractive targets for thieves. One burglar alone netted £80 million. Daniel O'Loughlin was part of a group of travellers known as the Johnson Gang. He was jailed for 11 years for his role in the heists, which took place over a 20-year period. English Heritage is one of the largest charities looking after such properties. They care for over 400 historic buildings, monuments and sites and host over 10 million visitors each year. Many of their sites are unstaffed and in rural locations, which raises security implications. Others within towns and cities face different security issues. For example, buildings with extremely valuable collections present criminals with a tempting target. So, who can look after such a large-scale and complex security requirement? 
News has reached us that ISS have landed a new three-year contract to deliver security services at English heritage sites across the UK. Michael Carr, the Managing Director of ISS Security, commented, We're incredibly proud to be appointed the security guardians of these vital sites of national importance. The Heritage Trust is a long-established organisation which entrusted us to secure these sites and properties which all have very specific security needs. Mark Badger, the area manager of West Midlands English Heritage, said, We're delighted to be working with such a respected security provider. The sites in the care of English Heritage are a unique collection of historic places that tell the story of England, so their security is of the utmost importance. It's holiday season and if you've not booked yours yet, you may want to be extra cautious. Criminals are now setting up bogus travel companies to steal money and perhaps more worryingly, identities. In the last seven days, security services around the world worked together to detain 153 individuals following the sixth Global Airport Action Days. This is where major international law enforcement operations target airline fraudsters. The individuals are suspected of flying using airline tickets purchased with stolen, compromised or fake credit card details. Between the 6th and 8th of June 2017, 64 countries, 84 airlines and 8 online travel agencies worked jointly with law enforcement officers to carry out operational actions in 230 airports across the world. Some individuals were caught trying to traffic heroin from Latin America to Africa and Europe, frequently flying back and forth using fraudulently purchased tickets. During the actions, new modi operandi were identified as being used by organised crime networks to gain access to transit areas in airports to facilitate illegal immigration and drug trafficking. The European Border and Coast Guard Agency, Frontex, deployed 27 officers to 18 airports to support this operation, assisting with detecting identity fraud, fake documents and illegal immigration. Eurojust also assisted throughout the action days. Rob Rainwright, Europol's executive director, said airline ticket fraud is borderless by nature. Effective international public-private cooperation and mutual assistance within the law enforcement environment make a distinctive contribution to our fight against this type of crime. Europol is fully committed to playing a leading part in this work through its unique capabilities. And finally, the app revolution has created a huge range of opportunities that could hardly have been imagined a decade or so ago, which includes apps that allow trading on the stock market. Closely related to this are binary apps. These enable users to place wages on whether the price of a commodity or the exchange rate of a currency will rise or fall. However, the creators of some of these apps are taking the money and running, even when users have made the right call. This has led Apple to ban all binary apps, including the legitimate ones from its app store and this seems like a safe bet to us. Now, a little news from us. We're going to be officially launching at IFSEC at the Excel in London next week between the 20th and the 22nd of June. So come and see us at stand C375 near the VIP area. If you have some expertise or some news you want to share, then join us for a video interview on our stand. Be sure to check out our website with regular video news, alerts, training and a marketplace where you can connect with decision makers in the security industry. It's free to join, so if you aren't already watching this news on www.securityexpert.online, click here and register today, as well as following us on Twitter and LinkedIn. You can also send us news stories or if you have some special expertise, request to appear on one of SEOL's future programs via our new website. Thank you for watching and together online we make the world a safer place. Bye for now.